So, so far, I've really only been looking at objects moving in horizontal circles, right? The passenger in the car and the, and the uh, corner of the turntable, car rounding the curve. So let's now look at objects going in vertical circles. So we're looking at them go, uh, from the side, going up and down. And a lot of circular motion happens at amusement parks. So let's say we go to the physics amusement park. Maybe we take a, a trip to Six Flags. And, uh, you know, you just got there, so you just want to ease into it. And so the first ride we're going to take is the Ferris wheel. I imagine probably all of you have been on the Ferris wheel, right? So... Uh, of course, once all the riders are loaded up, everything has to move around at the same speed. So this is going to be a great example of uniform circular motion, everything moving at the same constant speed. And just let's draw a quick sketch of what the Ferris wheel looks like as a whole, and then we'll identify different parts of the, uh, the riders on it. And so let's say here's the ground, and here's the, the big support, and here's the circle of the Ferris wheel. And we're not going to draw all the parts of it, but let's draw some of the seats around the Ferris wheel. And let's say it's moving around in a general clockwise fashion, again, at a constant speed. And that's pretty much true, right? Once the uh, riders are all loaded on and it gets going, it's going at a constant speed. We're going to be identifying two locations, specifically a rider at the top and a rider at the bottom, and we'll develop equations specifically for the normal force on the rider at the top and the bottom. And this is a very typical sort of problem you might see in circular motion. So let's focus on the top first, and let's draw, there's the top of the curve, and there's a seat at the top of the curve, and a person on the top of the curve, and let's say this is, you know, the best Ferris wheel ever. This person's having the time of their life, their arms are outstretched, woo, they're having a great time. And we're going to draw a free body diagram, but of course, before we do that, we start with all the information off to the side. Now, when we were drawing the horizontal circles, we really couldn't draw the velocity vector because the object was either going directly towards us, directly away from us, but here we certainly can. So why don't you go ahead and pause the video and draw the velocity, acceleration, and net force vectors off to the side. Okay, so remember our Ferris wheel is going in a clockwise direction. So at this moment, our person is heading strictly to the right, right? Always tangent to the circular path and to maintain this clockwise motion, this person is going strictly to the right. And we know that circular motion is always accelerated motion. And which way does the acceleration always point? Sure, towards the center. And the center is down here, below the person. So the centripetal acceleration points straight down. And sigma f equals ma. Remember, it's a vector equation. The direction of the net force is always the direction of the acceleration. So sigma f also points straight down. Now, we need to establish a positive direction like we always do for free body diagrams. And normally we would call the direction of motion the positive, but that's actually not a good choice here because of the way sigma f is pointing, right? This is a distinct difference from when we did linear motion, when everything was sort of in a straight line, backwards or forwards. And so the only thing that kind of makes sense here is to call down as the positive because both the acceleration and the net force point down. So that's what we're going to do. So this is a, a distinct change. So now go ahead and draw the free body diagram. Pause the video as you do. And I'm sure you all started, of course, with weight pointing, of course, straight down. So there's the weight vector. And then, of course, the person sitting on top of the seat. So there's got to be a normal force. And which way is it going to point? Well, it's going to point straight up. But how should we draw that normal force compared to the weight? Well, if it's equal to the weight, what would that mean? That would mean the net force equals zero and the acceleration equals zero. And that can't be, right? Because, of course, circular motion is always accelerated motion. If, if the acceleration were zero, that means the person would be moving to the right and would continue moving to the right. That's what zero acceleration means. That can't be good, right? That's, there's no way that's going to happen. Since the acceleration and net force point downwards, of course, that means the downwards force wins. And so that means that the weight must be larger than the normal force. Does that mean we should change the weight vector? No, we've already established the weight vector. What it really means is we draw the normal force smaller. And remember, it's a very visual sort of thing. You should make it obviously smaller. Obviously, you know, until we actually put numbers in, we don't know how much smaller. But anyone looking at this free body diagram should definitely be able to tell who's winning. Definitely the weight is larger, normal force is less. And that means the net force points down. Everything makes sense. All right, what's our next step? Of course, we're going to write sigma f equals ma, but remember, it is mac because it is a centripetal acceleration. And you know the next step. We're always going to focus on the left-hand side of this. We're going to build up sigma f based on the free body diagram, based on the fact that we called down the positive. So go ahead and pause the video and do that on your own. And we've been doing this a really long time. So, of course, we know weight is pointing straight down. So down is positive, it's a positive mg, normal force is pointing up, but down is positive, so that's going to be a minus n. I hope everyone did positive mg minus n, right? Again, this is review, this stuff we've been doing a really long time. I left the other side blank because now what we're going to do is we're going to replace a sub c with v squared over r. So we have mv squared over r on the right-hand side. 
And now we're going to solve this for normal force. So pause the video and just do the algebraic rearrangement solving for n. Now remember, we don't want to solve for negative n. And I've told you this many times throughout the year, but I'm going to reiterate it here. Do not, at least my advice is, do not solve for negative n and then multiply through by negative 1. That's usually where things go wrong. You lose a negative sign, you forget to multiply by negative 1. Instead, what I would do is I would immediately move n over to the right. This way, we're going to solve for positive n. So I would move n over to the right, move mv squared over r over to the left, sort of flip-flop them. And then in my mind, I would just rearrange it all the way around. And so you should end up with this, n equals mg minus mv squared over r. I, I hope you got that. I mean, this is just simple algebra at this point. And honor students, you're all good at algebra, right? You should definitely be able to do that. And then if you want to get a little fancy, since we see a common term of m, we can certainly pull m to the outside. You certainly don't have to do this last step. I just like to do it. You know, if we were putting numbers in a calculator, it would be a couple fewer buttons to push and so it just looks a little fancier. Is this a new equation? No, it's just normal force in this particular situation and that's not going to be all situations so notice I'm not boxing anything in here. It's just, you know, this is what happens in this situation. Now if we look at what we have here, this says mg minus mv squared over r and mv squared over r is going to be a positive number just because these are all scalars and so definitely we see that mg is the larger of the two values, right? We take mg and subtract something to get normal force and so we have verification that normal force is less than mg just like we supposed would happen when we did our free body diagram. So everything's making sense. Now let's focus on the bottom. So we start over and now we draw the bottom of the curve and the seat and our person and of course our person's going backwards, right? Because they're still maintaining this uh, circular motion in a clockwise fashion. So pause the video, go ahead and draw velocity, acceleration, and net force off to the side. All right, so now, of course, the velocity is pointing the other way. I'm sure you've all noticed when you're on Ferris wheel, half the time you're, of course, moving backwards, right? And now, which way are acceleration and net force pointing? Well, the center of the circle is above the person, right? And so, of course, acceleration and net force are pointing straight up. Once again, we're going to call the direction of acceleration a positive direction. That's what kind of makes sense here. And I'll go ahead and draw the free body diagram. Now, once again, I hope you started with weight pointing straight down, and it's the same person. So really take the time and, you know, make sure you're detailed enough to draw the weight vector the exact same length, or at least, you know, pretty much the same length. You don't have to measure, but, you know, eye it up because it's the same person. Why would the weight change? Now, how about normal force? Okay, we know it's going to point straight up. And we know it can't be equal to weight because, once again, if it were equal to weight, then the acceleration would be zero and a person would just continue to the left, and that's not going to make any sense. So we don't know what force is either larger than the weight or smaller than the weight. Which one is it? Well, by the same logic we did before, we should recognize since the net force points up, the upward force has to win. And so the normal force is pointing up, and it's going to be larger than weight. So that clearly, normal force wins over weight, pushing the person up towards the center, causing the centripetal acceleration. And now I'm just going to go through the same steps, and I want you to pause the video, starting with sigma f equals ma, and eventually get to an algebraic expression for the normal force. Go ahead and do that on your own. So we do sigma f equals mac, and then on the left-hand side, as always, we build up the forces based on our free body diagram, based on our positive direction, and up is positive, so it's going to be a positive n, down is negative, so it's going to be a minus mg, so we should have positive n minus mg equals mv squared over r. And we're going to solve for normal force, just add mg to both sides. And again, if you want to get a little fancy, you can pull a mass out to the outside. And so we have an expression that looks like this. Notice, of course, it's different from the other one. We should, shouldn't expect it to be the same. Why would it be, right? And we'd see that to get normal force, we take the weight and we add mv squared of r. So clearly we see normal force is larger than weight, just as we predicted would happen with our free body diagram. Everything is making sense.